Hello, my name is Alex Murphy. I'm a Doctor Who Scarf Knitter. Uh, you might know me online as the Ginger Doctor or Doctor Knits. And I am here to talk about crocheting the border on the Season 18 scarf because I have had a lot of inquiries since I did my custom chenille run, which you'll see right here. This is the fiber that we ended up with. I've gotten a lot of questions about how to do it because it's so untraditional. It's such a unique thing that is done on the edge of the scarf. So one of the first big questions that I get is what kind of a crochet is it? And it is a slip stitch. There is no doubt it's not a single crochet. A single crochet has a little height to it. The edge on the real scarf lays totally flat. It is definitely a slip stitch. And on the hero scarf, the TV scarf, the only TV scarf that's uh, the chenille, the crochet border is front side out. So this is so the wrong side has the back side of the crochet. That is not true on the exhibition scarves. So if you're crocheting it off in rust, I highly recommend doing it this way. And if you're crocheting it off in purple, I would recommend doing it the other way. Let's talk about our tools. So this is a crochet hook. This one is a H. It's an H size needle. It's a five millimeter, so it's the equivalent of a US eight knitting needle. I try to use a crochet hook that's comparable in size to the knitting needle I use. If you get too big of a needle, you'll have a hard time getting it through the, your your fabric. And if you use too small of a needle, um, you risk just like over tightening it by force of habit. This is an H. It's an eight, and I knitted this with an eight, so that's what I would recommend that you use. One side is already all crocheted. And it looks lovely. It's nice and straight. I am right-handed. So this will be a right-handed tutorial. I'm sorry, left-handed people. I know there's a couple of them on stitches. I'm going to be moving right to left because I'm right-handed. So how I hold my crochet hook and how I use it, that's it's like I'm writing. So I put the end of my work on my right side. And as I move, it's going to go this direction. And I'm just going to move the scarf over. So I grab my yarn. And I leave a tail at least six inches. I try to leave mine way too long because better too much than too little. You're going to make a slip knot. If you know how to crochet already and you know how to do this, then feel free to skip it. But for those of you who don't know how to crochet and have not watched my tutorials on the season 16, 17 crude joins, you're going to start with a slip knot. You're going to take your yarn. And you're going to make a loop like that, just like that, very simple. And you take one end, I'm going to use this end, and you're going to put a loop through that loop. Can you see that? You can just reach your fingers in the back side and pull it. If you need a more in-depth tutorial because that was really clunky, then just go and watch my tutorials on the yellow green join or the red join but you have a slip knot now on the end of your on your crochet hook you're going to hold your fabric your scarf in your hand so that the wrong side is facing you and you're going to find like the first stitch what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting the needle between the rib you're going to be sticking the hook in between um these spaces between the ribs where the edging sits. So you're going to go to the end here, and it'll be kind of hard to do, especially on the cast off end, but you're going to try to find the first one. The first space between the ribs. You're going to stick your hook in it. And you're going to find, see, this is my tail. I'll let that sit to my right. Take my working yarn give it tension. I hold my tension like this when I'm knitting and when I'm crocheting because I learned how to crochet first. Um, so sorry right-handed English knitters who hold their tension in their right hand usually. I don't think you can do that with crochet. I'm not sure that it's possible. So tension in this hand. Stick your, stick your um, needle through from front to back. So this is the front. This is the back. 
and you're gonna catch your yarn. You're gonna you're gonna I have my hook, my actual hook facing back behind. And you're gonna bring it around the yarn like that. And then you're gonna use the hook to grab it, and you're just gonna pull it through. And you're gonna pull it through that one that you already made with your slip stitch. There. And now you have your first one. And I leave this tail just like I do at the end, which you'll see again. I leave this this tail here, and when I tassel at the end, I just stick this through one of my tassels as if it was on my tassel, so that I don't have to worry about darning it in and making it bulky or anything like that. So, so let's continue. And I'll just show you how it goes once you start to get into it. And what I'm really looking for here to find, because you'll see that it's slightly inset. It's not the edge, the, the last stitch still pokes out the side. That's true of the real scarf as well. It's just a feature of having it crocheted in. And there should be about two stitches here that make up the edge. Let's see. Can get that should be about two stitches. See that right there? That's two like like threads. Can you see right there? So I'm trying to go in between those, and don't kill yourself trying to make sure that you get exactly those two. You should be able to see there should be a little cluster right here, especially if you're using this particular chenille. There should be a little cluster right there. If you just poke the needle up through the middle of it. You should get it. And if you don't, it's fine. Um, there's really not a, not a big, it's not a big deal if you don't. And what I'm doing here, this little back loop here, should pretty much cover the rib. It should it should it should look like you've sewn it over each rib. So you're looking at the little space between your ribs here to um poke your needle through. And you don't want to pull it too tight. Chenille is non elastic. So as tight as you pull it is as tight as you're gonna get. It's never gonna loosen up because it won't ever stretch. So make sure that you don't crochet it too tight. It will actually snap if you do it too tight. Is that, did I already do that? I can't tell. Chenille problems. Just to give you an idea of how this will work when you tassel, you have your border here, it's finished, and you have your tail for your slip stitch just sort of hanging out. You haven't broken it or woven it in or anything like that. You're going to take your tassel. It's really easy to determine where to place the tassels on the Season 18 scarf because you have 21 tassels and 42 stitches. So it just goes on every other, every other stitch gets a tassel. And it's just one strand of each I cut mine into 11 inch into 11 inch cuttings you're going to go from the back into the front and using your latch hook you're going to do the proper latch hook thing except that you're going to take this tail as if it was part of as if it was part of your main tassels Take it, pull it through. Be very careful that you don't um, snap any of your chenille because it will snap if you're too, if you're not gentle enough with it. Pull it all through. You want to do it from hook from the back to the front, so that um, the back side of the tassel faces forward. That's how the original was done. And you'll see here that now you've got it tasseled.